Hi guys, I have some really exciting news to share with you today. We have a great new book coming out. In fact, it's out already. It's a meatless book, which means more than 200 meatless recipes from the kitchens of Martha Stewart. Really great, really delicious, and since we're in a vegetarian week in honor of this book, I thought that we would do a recipe from this book. Today, we're doing tomato soup with poached eggs. Perfect vegetarian meal, if you ask me. Let me show you how to make it. The first thing you need to do is slice up some garlic. You need three cloves of garlic, very, very thinly sliced. If you didn't want to slice them, maybe you don't like eating big pieces of sliced garlic, or I mean elegant thin pieces of sliced garlic, you could certainly chop them. I'm not smashing them because I kind of want to have the whole shape. These are pretty big cloves, but it's one of the major flavoring components of this dish, so I'm not concerned. I like to do it lengthwise because that's the way that I like them to look. It really isn't a flavor issue here. Just want to very thinly slice them. You're halfway done already. Make sure you have one extra clove of garlic on hand and just slice it in half. You're going to rub that on your rustic toast later. Very rustic, this dish. Now you want to saute your garlic, two tablespoons of olive oil, give or take. Add your garlic, and you just want to cook it until it's fragrant and just lightly golden around the edges. You do not want it burnt or bitter tasting, so be careful. And then add a pinch of hot pepper flakes, a little extra. For good measure, give it a stirry stir. And then you need a pan of peeled tomatoes, coarsely chopped, juice reserved, so we can get that ready while this is getting fragrant. One can whole peeled tomatoes and juice. You're going to chop the tomatoes and keep the juice. So you can chop these in the can with a pair of scissors, or you can just drain them in a sieve like I'm doing, and then just leave the juice in there and chop your tomatoes and then combine them back together again. Up to you. Make slightly less of a mess when you're chopping them if you've already drained them. Obviously, there's plenty of juice inside and that kind of make it a little bit messy, but don't worry. You can clean up, right? My tomato juices are about to flow over my board. Just in time I'm done, you can add your tomatoes right back to the juices because they're all going to go in together. So these tomatoes can go right in here with the garlic. We add your tomatoes and then add three cups of water and bring it to a boil. Then you're going to simmer it. What you want to do is simmer it till it reduces a little when the flavors intensify, but basically that's it. Can you believe it? Add a little bit of salt, but not too much because canned tomatoes already have salt. You can taste it at the end make sure that it has the right amount of salt for you before you add your eggs, because you're going to put your eggs right in this liquid. While this is cooking, you can get delicious rustic bread ready to serve with it. Basically, you're making really big crostini with a nice big slice of rustic bread. Obviously, if you're only serving four, you only need to make four, but it's always nice to have an extra on hand. This is a great use for day-old bread that you might not want to make a sandwich out of because you're broiling it and it gets really crunchy and delicious. Just line the bread up on a baking sheet in a single layer and then brush it with a little bit of oil. I just like to pour my oil into a bowl and then brush it evenly over your bread. It, it's better than drizzling it. You drizzle it on and the oil only stays in that one spot. So if you have a pastry brush designed for oil, use it now and then they go into a broiler. Just a couple minutes, watch them because they burn really easily. I think my bread's probably done. This broiler is super fast. See? That was not a minute, I guarantee it. Put these aside, reduce it to a simmer, and then cover it and cook it for 10 minutes. While I'm waiting for the soup to finish, I'm just gonna rub my bread with a little bit of garlic. This is optional, but it tastes really good. Just take your cut side of your clove and rub it over your bread. Adds just a tiny bit of garlicky flavor without being overwhelming. Okay. Now we can poach our eggs and then we're done. I think that this takes like 15 minutes start to finish. Maybe I'm exaggerating just slightly, but it's really fast. And I love a fast dinner. Eggs for dinner is one of the fastest things that you can have. Take each egg and crack it into a small bowl. This is gonna help you control the adding of the egg into the poaching liquid. Take the egg and then put the lip of your bowl directly into the hot liquid and just allow the egg to slip into the poaching liquid, putting the egg white over the top, very gentle. And that'll control the spreading of the egg white and stuff. And also, it is really helpful if you use fresh eggs for this. The fresher the eggs, 
the less likely that the white will spread out in the liquid. And then you just keep doing that until you've added all your eggs. You know what else? A little bit of acidity helps the egg white set right away. And since this is a tomato sauce, it's already predisposed to not spreading around. Cover the whole pot and let them simmer for three to four, maybe five minutes until the egg whites are set and the yolks are still runny. That's the way that I like them. If you want them a little more cooked, leave them in a little longer. I hope you're as excited as I am, because it's time for the unveiling. You may not be excited yet, but you will be soon when you see how fantastic this is. Take a piece of bread, put it in your bowl, and then spoon an egg and some of the delicious tomato broth right over your bread. It's really cool. I wanna know if you love this dish as much as we love it here in the kitchen. It smells fantastic, but to make it smell even more fantastic, I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh basil to the top. The waftability factor, extremely high. I smell tomatoes and fresh garlic, fragrant basil. It's delicious, it's fast, it's vegetarian, and it's in our new Meatless book. Check it out. Go buy the book right now, or at least make this recipe.